You guys seen any PM&R superstars out there? Because my name is Dr. Bruno Subaral, your AOC PM&R Fellowship Chair, here to help put the PM&R in comprehension. Case 36. Case 36. A 28-year-old male involved in the triple jump noticed a sudden onset pain in the front of his hip. X-rays demonstrated an avulsion fracture of the ASIS. What muscle caused this? So this is a tough question because you either know the answer or you don't. But for our purposes, we can take the four major avulsion fractures of the lower extremity and place it into a nifty chart so that you guys would get this answer right every single time. So when creating our chart for avulsion fractures, let's first start with the proximal lower extremities. And you have to consider the muscles that are strong enough to avulse bone from, well, bone. In our patient's case, he both had pain in the front of his hip and an avulsion fracture of the ASIS on imaging. So what muscle in the body can do this? Well, how about the longest muscle in the whole body, the sartorius? This whole thing's bigger than us, Gretchen. There's no sartori you or sartori me. There's only sartori us. Sartori us. So how do we remember that the sartorius muscle originates at the ASIS? Easy. It has ASIS in the name. Side note, the origin of the sartorius muscle is important, but the insertion is equally important because as we know, the sartorius muscle is a long, thin muscle that originates at the ASIS, loops around the proximal thigh, and finally attaches at the medial proximal border of the tibia where it joins two other muscles, the semitendinosus and the gracilis, to form the pesanceritis. So now let's talk about the other two groups of muscles that can evolve bone from bone, the quadriceps and the hamstrings, who both offer up the culprit as the femoris muscle, the rectus femoris for the quadriceps and the biceps femoris for the hamstrings. Look, I'm a modern gentleman, which is why I think we all should support the femoris movement. So these last two are easy. If the pain is in your front side, meaning pain in your groin, and your avulsion fracture is in the AIIS, you should be thinking that it's the rectus femoris that's causing this pain. Now if the pain is in your backside, meaning pain in the glutes, with an avulsion fracture of the ischial tuberosity, you should be thinking the culprit is the biceps femoris. Easy enough. Well, there's one more avulsion fracture that I want to talk about, and it's in the foot. Well, this first was described back in 1902 by an orthopedic surgeon named Dr. Jones, who sustained the fracture while dancing. I mean, he had to. He just got served. So what happened to Dr. Jones when he was moonwalking back in 1902 was actually a transverse fracture through the metatarsal base. That is a Jones fracture. However, that should be differentiated from an avulsion fracture where forcible plantar flexion and inversion takes a chunk of the metatarsal styloid. And that is called a pseudo-Jones fracture. The culprit is the peroneus brevis muscle. So now let's recap. If you have an avulsion fracture of the anterior superior iliac spine, it's the sartorius muscle. If you have an avulsion fracture of the anterior inferior iliac spine, it's going to be your quadriceps, your rectus femoris. If you have pain in your butt with an avulsion fracture of the ischial tuberosity, of course it's going to be coming from your hamstrings, the biceps femoris. If you have pain in your small toe because you took a chunk of your metatarsal styloid out, it'll be caused by the small peroneus, which is the peroneus brevis. So, and that's going to give you your pseudo-Jones fracture. So sweet, dancing Dr. Jones. We're all finished. And I love you guys. You did awesome this time. So visit us at www.aocpmnr.org and subscribe to my videos. And we'll see you guys next time.